Hello and welcome. This is going to be part two of our capture macro that we started before. If you haven't watched part one, recommend doing so. You may be a little lost if you jump in here now. So I'm going to use the same picture, same image of a capture that we started with in the first one, but there's some changes. First off, it still locates, figures out what the numbers are, and clicks the buttons. But now we can move this around. So if the capture pops up in different locations on the screen, it automatically finds the pop-up and then it looks for the letters and figures out where the buttons are and presses the right buttons. So let's take a look at what changes I made in order to make this happen. All right, so the first thing you'll notice is a whole bunch of math. And we need that math because now we're working with variables. Since this pop-up can be anywhere on the screen, we have to de determine a few things. First, we have to see if the pop-up's there, then figure out a point, some location, some coordinates to calculate everything else with. And in this instance, I made a pixel pattern that starts here in the blue, then goes to dark maroon, the light maroon, blue, and then yellow, 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 yellow. So that's the pixel pattern here. It's just identifying that the pop-up's on the screen. And then this math here is then taken from the very first start of the pixel pattern that I made is here in the blue. And then figuring out where everything else is, where these numbers are, and where the buttons are. So like I said, this first line, it's an if statement and it's if the capture pop-up is on the screen. We need that because I have uh, color wait for here. So if you have the macro doing other things with, the, if you're playing a game, you will. It's gonna be attacking, healing, looting. You don't wanna just sit here and wait for the capture to pop up. Then you wouldn't get anything accomplished. So this if statement figures out it only runs all this when the pop-up is on the screen and that's the only time you want it to run so it's not going to sit here and wait unless the pop-up is on the screen and then it locates the pixel pattern like I said it's going to go to the very first uh, point that you clicked when you set up your pixel pattern in my case it's just blue right here and then for illustrative purposes I have mouse move to that. These are the coordinates when it locates the pixel pattern and that's just so you can see uh, how I set it up and what it's doing. So it's finding the location of this pop-up and it's moving to the very first pixel. And then the math is kind of figuring out the rest. So if you remember from the first one, I'm going to make this a little bigger. Down here, we used um, pixel pattern near coordinate, and I chose to go ahead and continue using that. But instead of coordinates, now we have variables. Since the pop-up can be anywhere on the screen, it's not going to be static. We have to use variables, and I just use x1 and y1. I use those because I'm already using x and y, and this is the next thing I need to figure out. So how did I figure it out? Well, like I said, mine starts here at the blue. So I have, I already know the, the coordinate, a coordinate that's on the pop-up, and all I need to do is figure out where this first number is. It's the same thing we did in part one when we talked about how to set this near coordinate up, is that it looks somewhere around here at one point and then around that point. So all I had to do is use the investigator tool for this xy coordinate, then subtract these xy coordinates to get how much of a difference it is. And that's the difference here that it's calculating for x1 and then y1. You can see it's 132 pixels off for the y coordinate. And that's what the variables here are doing. Then the next part is the numbers where to have the mouse click for these buttons 
Now Y2 was easy because all these buttons are in a line. So Y2 is going to be the same for all of them, as you can see. So same thing. Use this first coordinate from the blue and figure it out how far down this button was. As you can see here, for Y1, which is these numbers, it's 132 pixels down to Y1, and then 199 down to Y2, which is the buttons. And then using the same type of logic, I did the rest for the other four. Now X is going to be different, so I chose a different variable name. Um, and that's the x-coordinate for number one, number two, and number three, and number four. And you can see that down here. This is the first one, first number, x number one, x number two, x number three. And once again, using the same logic, just figured out from this point, what's the difference in coordinates for my x-coordinates. And that's pretty much how to set it up. And as you can see here, I'll move this out of the way. Here, I'll do it down in the corner this time. It finds the pop-up no matter where you put it. And then from there, figures out what the numbers are and clicks in the right locations for the buttons here. If you're using this in the game, there's some things that you may not need, just a couple things. One, like I said before, this mouse stop move it's just a visual indicator. It's to show you what I'm using, how I set it up. You don't need this for it actually. It actually is useless for um, the macro to work. It's just a, it's more helpful in this tutorial to show you what it's doing. And the same for this pause. It pauses for a second after it goes to this coordinate just to show you where I'm starting from and where I'm getting all my calculations from. So after you set it up, you can delete that. You can delete the pause or make it a much shorter pause. Anyway, hope that helps. Good luck. Have fun.